Brett McCracken, and I'm with the Center for Christianity, Culture, and the Arts here at Biola University. I'm also a film critic for Christianity Today, as well as the managing editor of Biola Magazine here at Biola University. So we're here today to talk about the best films of 2014 and some of the films that wrestled with God and spirituality and themes of faith. So I'm excited to, to get into that discussion, but let me introduce the panelists um, before we begin. So Nate Bell here is a, a, a alumnus of Biola. He studied film production at Biola and now teaches um, film at Azusa Pacific and as well College of the Canyons and I think at Biola That's they right. teach occasional courses. Yeah. Um, we have Camille Tucker over here. She's a screenwriter um, and a consultant on screenplays and also a professor of screenwriting here at Biola University in the Cinema and Media Arts Department. Mm -hmm. And then to my left is Eugene Swen. He's a filmmaker and co-director of Real Spirituality, Film Institute at Fuller Theological Seminary. Uh, he's also worked as a producer on various international productions, and he currently kind of divides his time between filmmaking and academia. So thank you all for being here and being a part of this discussion. I think it'll be a really enjoyable time. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah looking forward to it. So I think for a first question to discuss, since we're kind of looking at the themes of spirituality in the year of film 2014, what for you guys was maybe the standout film that wrestled with spirituality or had something interesting to say from that perspective? Mm -hmm. Maybe each of us could share one film that stood out on that question. You yeah. want to start, Nate? Sure, why not? Um, I really enjoyed a film called The Immigrant, which mm -hmm. came out, mm -hmm. I think, May, June of last year, and it didn't get a very wide release, so I don't think yeah. a lot of people had the opportunity to see it. It was mm -hmm. one of those um, tragedies of distribution where yeah. the distributor just decided to do a limited release. But mm -hmm. I, I found it to be a very rich, mm -hmm. rewarding film in a lot of ways. It's a period piece. Mm -hmm. stars Marion Cotillard as an immigrant who is separated from her sister yeah. in New York City and who uh, falls in with the wrong crowd, uh, particularly Joaquin Phoenix, and she sort of descends into um, a, a difficult lifestyle mm -hmm. and struggles to retain her dignity and her soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a film that is full of Christian imagery, yeah. a lot of visual symbolism, mm -hmm. but also I think a really uh, fine sense of guilt and redemption. Mm -hmm. So, And it's rendered in this very rich classical yeah. style that's reminiscent of a lot of older Hollywood films, kind of a almost like a 1930s melodrama or right. something. So it's a totally. gorgeous film to look at, and I think a very carefully done film in terms of themes mm -hmm. and uh, just some really, really wonderful moments. Mm -hmm. um, the question at the end of it is, mm. who, which of these characters will be redeemed? Right. You know, not all of them will be right. redeemed, and so it works up to a very powerful climax. Right. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Um, the character of Joaquin Phoenix, who is kind of the villain. By the end of the film, you, you are wondering, is he the character that this is a redemption story mm -hmm. for? Because um, it, it appears that it's Marion Cotillard's character, mm -hmm. of, um, kind of a downtrodden, poor you know, immigrant in an mm -hmm. unfortunate situation. But yeah, there, there's this multiple character redemption arc going right. on. Just right, you could look at it from different yeah. angles and uh, different points of view. Mm -hmm. There's also a third character played by Jeremy, Jeremy Renner, Renner who, yeah. who has uh, who sort of rounds out the, yeah. the, the love triangle in the movie, but mm -hmm. um, it's all very well done. Yeah. yeah, very moving. It actually took me a second viewing to to mm -hmm. really appreciate mm -hmm. what James Gray was, mm -hmm. was accomplishing. He, of course, was the director of Two Lovers and mm -hmm. We Own the Night, and I think he's a very yeah. he ambitious a American maker, director, yeah. yeah. And that film was on Netflix for those of you who <laughs> watch yeah. it. Yeah. Perfect, so go it. watch it. Mm -hmm. Definitely, <laughs> worth your time. Camille, what about you? So I'm going to say Selma, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't get to see a lot of films this year, but I will say, mm -hmm. for me, I think that the director, Ava DuVernay, she has mm -hmm. a special gift with taking these big issues, social issues, yeah. and giving us intimacy, mm -hmm. giving us an intimate look at the players or the people behind the social sure. issues. Mm -hmm. And theologically, the film resonates with me mm. because it looks at the man behind the mission. Mm. You know, we have all, all heard like, and we're in a generation where we're reading in history books mm -hmm. about Dr. King and what he did, but people don't have that sense of like, who really is Dr. Right. King? And so we get to see the man, we get this intimate portrayal of the man behind the mission, but we also get to see that fragility. Mm -hmm. We get to see how, um, 
how I, some, in some ways he feels like um, he's not, he's maybe is not enough or mm -hmm. he needs, I love the scene where he calls, um, he calls Mahalia Jackson and he's like, oh, just yeah. sing, sing for me. me. Yeah. You know, and he really, right. he's like, he needs to hear the voice of God. Right. And, um, and in other words, in that moment took me into the whole thing of like, sometimes feeling like we can't, we don't know if we're hearing from God or mm -hmm. am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. Am I answering the right calling? Yeah. Is this the right mission? Mm -hmm. And realizing that somebody like Dr. King doubted himself sure. possibly at times. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, um, the themes or the, the ideas that I thought about were calling mm -hmm. and purpose mm -hmm. and even thinking of biblical stories of like, you know, we always hear about like Noah mm -hmm. or David or Joseph, anyone who felt that um, they were called to do something for their for a people mm -hmm. or for a larger purpose, the doubt that goes behind right. it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. really, even when you read the pages of scripture, we don't get into like the psychology mm -hmm. of those mm -hmm. individuals, but in, we have film now as a medium yeah. to tell stories. And with this filmmaking, because it's such an intimate portrayal, she takes us into his mm -hmm. psychology mm -hmm. and the relationship with his wife and mm -hmm. the other dynamics. Don't mm -hmm. see as much the family, and I don't think that was needed. Yeah. Um, but for me, um, I could relate because mm -hmm. sometimes I even feel like, you know, God, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. And is this really what you want me to do? And if you want me to do it, am I empowered to do it? And when do I make mistakes? Right. And um, the key scene when he kneels on um, the bridge after he's gotten all these people to come out and support him in the, the second, I mm -hmm. guess, attempt on the march mm -hmm. on Selma. Mm -hmm. um, and he turns around, mm -hmm. you know, he prays, right. you know, and right. turns around and it's appeared to be such a failure right. to so many people. Um, that scene just blows me away. And that reminds me of those God moments in which, you know, wh um, who are we? Mm -hmm. Are we empowered? Sure. And maybe what, being empowered by God or called by God looks different mm -hmm. than what people think on the outside. Sure. So yeah. it's a very moving yeah. film. Well said. Yeah, <laughs> very well said. Well, for me, um, I'm I'm sure not many people have seen this film, but it's it's a European film called Two Days One Night um, by this this pair of Belgian filmmakers, the Darden brothers, mm -hmm. um, who I don't know where they're at spiritually, but I think they make films just continually that are that have a real spiritually seeking core to them nice. and. Um, some people have called their films kind of humanistic, and mm -hmm. you know that can be a, a phrase that is put on things mm -hmm. that are, mm -hmm. may, you know, they might not feel comfortable using spiritual language. But I feel like Two Days One Night, which also stars Marion Cotillard, interesting. <laughs> well, two of our films True. have starred her. <laughs> She's our patron um, saint of 2014. She such a brilliant actress. She picks actress. great roles. Yeah. Um, but it's a film about a woman who is struggling with depression and her job. Um, she works at a factory and um, they they need to cut um, personnel and uh, they cut her, but she just desperately needs the job. Mm -hmm. And the way that they decided to cut her, it was like a vote with the, um, the other coworkers and they voted her out. But then the movie is kind of over two days, they give her a second shot to kind of campaign with her coworkers to get them to do a second vote and this time vote to um, let her stay. But it's th uh, the coworkers will get a raise if they boot her out. So they, there's this tension between mm. kind of collective um, collectivism and what we do for each other, mm -hmm. and then kind of individual ambition and like, um, yeah. yeah. So it, there's a lot of interesting things going on just with cultural commentary and so social economic commentary. But in terms of spirituality, I think that there's just this this feeling of um, yeah, just searching for justice and kind of the, the vestiges of morality that I feel like a lot of contemporary European cinema mm -hmm. is really wrestling with um, what what life post God and post Christianity looks like. Where does the moral compass come from? And a lot of the films that I think we, we can discuss today, um, Calvary being another one, right. I think you see this theme <laughs> of kind of the, in the shambles of post Christian Europe, where, do, where does morality come from? And um, yeah. So I think this film and the Darden Brothers filmography generally oh. captures that really well. So I highly recommend the Great. film. Absolutely. What about you, Eugene? For me, it's funny because all of those films, I think uh, The Immigrant, mm -hmm. Selma, and uh, Two Days, One Night, all those to me are spiritually very powerful mm -hmm. movies and I could have easily named any one of those. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go with maybe a more obvious choice, uh, which is Boyhood by uh, mm -hmm. Richard Linklater. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so easily good. one of the most acclaimed films mm -hmm. from this past year and certainly one of the most talked about movies. I feel like the way that kind of Tree of Life, uh, which was released 
uh, three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, that was an obvious choice for me because mm -hmm. that movie, in Spirituality and Religion, was written all over it. Mm -hmm. uh, boyhood for me is an obvious choice because it is so much about the spirituality of everyday life. Yeah. And I feel like that really is what Richard Linklater excels at mm -hmm. you know, with movies like The Before Sunrise, Before yeah. Sunset, and Before Midnight Trilogy, and uh, Slackers. Mm -hmm. uh, these movies, they're just about the intimate moments of everyday life. Mm -hmm. That you know, This particular movie, as I'm sure most of you would already know, uh, it is just the story of a boy. I mean, mm -hmm. it's virtually plotless. Yeah. Right. It's uh, 12 years uh, in the life of a boy yeah. that itself took 12 years to make, mm -hmm. uh, so much has been made about the uh, production process of this movie mm -hmm. and how they basically started the process 12 years ago and mm -hmm. come back and uh, film uh, for three or four days every year mm -hmm. for the last 12 years. So, but in addition to this really audacious uh, kind of formal uh, conceit, uh, the movie itself is just, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that it's so unassuming, which I think is part of Richard Linklater's charm as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. that it's not about sort of the greatest hits or the most impressive and most important and most powerful moments. Right. But it's just about the minutia, uh, the minor moments of everyday life mm -hmm. that collectively uh, form who we are. Right. Uh, and this movie is the portrait of a boy, uh, played by Albert Coltrane. Uh, but despite the title, Boyhood, it really is the portrait of the entire family. Yeah, parent the parents, yeah. parenthood, right. mm -hmm. Uh, sibling. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought the title could be par Parenthood mm -hmm. or maybe Fatherhood Easily. or Parenthood, yeah. though, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Single, single motherhood. Like single yeah. motherhood. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Exactly. And it's sympathetic to all of these, all of them, these family yeah. members absolutely. in different ways, mm -hmm. to different degrees. Yeah. I think the most sympathy given to the, the boy himself. but And it doesn't absolutely. judge them, which I love. It. It's very objective it's in, in yeah. the gaze. It doesn't like choose sides necessarily. Um, and it makes it lets you kind of um, read into like, well, yeah, that decision wasn't so good, or like, exactly, because they do make poor decisions at times, and but that's life, and that's like twelve years in the life of a family. It's messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love what you said about the everyday mm -hmm. moments, and what was the very last line in the film is in the quote or the his his mm -hmm. uh, dialogue. He says something really profound. Yeah, something that's to that effect. Sort of along those lines, and it's yeah. a beautiful line. Of something dialogue. about like we don't we don't seize the moment; the moment seizes us. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh gosh, yeah. I love that. As, <laughs> what was the most the be most beautiful thing to me about a movie like Tree of Life, for example, is the way it fixes its gaze mm -hmm. on the mystery and the beauty of everyday life. Yeah. Right. That's an interesting point of yeah. comparison mm -hmm. to, to compare it to Malik because yeah. it's yeah. basically the same subject but told in radically different I styles. Texas, Texas style. boyhood. Yes, wow, exactly. again, the Texas yeah. connection, I mm -hmm. forgot right. that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, whereas Malik, I would say, is more overtly... Um, kind of ecstatic, right? Yes, like ecstatic, and, right. Uh, and certainly informed perhaps more by... Transcendence. Transcendence, Transcendence yes. Right. Uh, I mean, each each film in its own way is trying to get at the same thing. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. the beauty of the mundane. The beauty of the mundane. Yeah. Yeah. And because the way the movie works is that, you know, by the end of it, I feel like the the collective, the cumulative effect of the movie is just overpowering. Mm -hmm. By the end, you know, when he graduates and when he leaves home to attend college, like right. those moments have such right. profound power Absolutely. that it kind of just sneaks up on you. And as I was watching it, and I couldn't help just kind of tear up uh, yeah. as I yeah. watched those parts yeah, of the film. It's very powerful. It's a beautiful film. film.